The Phoenix Suns are heating up, and they're looking like the team that we all thought they could be at the beginning of the season with the big three of Brad Beal, KD, and Devin Booker. At Christmas, they were 14-15, and 15, and since then, they are 19-7. and 7. They're up to 6th in the Western Conference and are 33-22 and 22 overall, a full 11 games over 500. They are 17-7 and 7 with Bradley Beal since Christmas. He has missed a couple of their dubs, but overall, he's been very impactful in their games. They are shooting it very well from the floor. Third in field goal percentage, 6th um, in three-point percentage. They are 9th in offensive rating, 15th in defensive rating, and 9th in the net. So one of those 10 teams that are... You know, in the positive, in the net rankings. And, of course, they are led by Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, who are both pure hoopers. And that is something that can carry you through an NBA playoff series when it gets down to Game 7. The other team knows all your sets, all your plays. Just having pure hoopers can get you over the edge. You look at KD's season, I mean, he is showing no signs of slowing down. An absolute monster out there, averaging 28 points on 54% shooting from the field. 44% from three on five attempts, 1.3 blocks for them. He's even playing defense. That's the crazy part. And it's not like these are easy shots. I mean, that's a falling away floater off of your back foot. Uh, we see a lot of his threes come like this, those little hang threes that he likes. That is fully contested, by the way. Uh, there's just nothing you can do to guard that. And then you got Devin Booker, who has been playing a lot out of the pick and roll, has really been playing as that true point guard for them this year. He's averaging 27.5 points per game, 4.6 rebounds, 7 assists, and 1 steal. A full 2.5 assists more than he was averaging last year. 50% shooting from the field. So between KD and Devin Booker, they're both shooting 50% or better from the field on over 27 points per game. He's shooting at 38% from 3 on about 6 attempts in 36 minutes. And like we said, he's become a pure point guard. 7 assists per game this year to 2.6 turnovers. I don't know the exact assist to turnover ratio there. Um, but last year he only averaged 5 assists per game. So a full or a little under 5 assists. So a full 2.5 more the last time he averaged over five assists per game he averaged 6.8 back in 2018-19 and he averaged over three turnovers a game that year so the assist to turnover ratio the highest of his career and along with Devin Booker Bradley Beal is really coming along he's been hurt a lot this season but he's now up to 18.2 points per game 4.5 rebounds 4.3 assists and a steal per night um you know good basketball with him and Devin Booker, they've kind of established a point guard rotation. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. He's also shooting at 50% from the field. So the big three all shooting at 50% from the field or better. There's a reason they are like number three in the NBA in field goal percentage. And since Christmas, he's averaging over 20 points a game to go with five assists, five rebounds, and is still averaging over or is still shooting at over 50% from the field. 35% from three, though. A uh, bit concerning during that stretch, but overall, I mean, like we said, they're 17 and 7 with him since Christmas, so not bad at all. And like we just said as well, they're starting to establish that point guard rotation because between D Book and Bradley Beal, they're averaging 12 assists per game. Now, yes, they don't have that true point guard, but they have both of those guys kind of chipping in. Kevin Durant also does a nice job, but I mean, it's tough to stop these Suns when you look at this squad, and then you also got. Uh, Grayson Allen sitting in the corner for threes, Yusuf Nurkic under the glass. So we're going to be talking about all of them and more. Uh, so make sure you stick around for the rest of this video. Also make sure to like button. Uh, we're trying to hit 100 likes on today's video. Hit that subscribe button as well. As you can see, a large majority of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel. So if that is you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And with that being said, let's go ahead and continue on. An elite third, fourth option depending on obviously the availability of Bradley Beal on any given night. But Grayson Allen can absolutely shoot the basketball 13 points per game 3.9 rebounds 3.2 assists and 0.8 steals but the dude can flat out stroke it balls uh 48 percent from three-point range 5.2 assists over 50 percent from the field so you got allen KD, D Book, and Bradley Beal all shooting at 50 percent or better from the field he leads the league in three-point percentage at almost 50 and he is the perfect complement to these three guys right here because you worry about those three guys and then you got uh Devin Booker swinging it across the court to Grayson Allen for the three uh, he's like three feet behind the line and he's knocking it down um Nurkic is another great compliment because all those guys kill you from outside 
Nurkic can get you from inside, and he's a great screener. That is one thing that is very underrated about him because they love using Devin Booker. They love using Kevin Durant in that ball screen. Um, great screener. He's averaging about 12 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists. Not a bad passer as a big man uh, as well. Kind of, you know, point guard by committee, if you will, in Phoenix. He's also averaging a steal, a block, in 52% shooting from the field, 25% from 3, uh, 1.6 attempts per game. So a solid season from him. This starting five is just really nice. It really works well together, um, especially when your center is averaging at four assists per game. Um, Eric Gordon starts when there's no Bradley Beal. He's averaging about 13 points per game this year, two rebounds, two and a half assists, and a steal. He's been really solid for them. Um, he's shooting at about 46% from the field, so not quite the mark that everybody else is shooting, but still pretty solid. 39% from three on 6.4 attempts for the 35-year-old. Still trying to get that ring. Um, and they have made some moves at the trade deadline. A lot of roster turnover. All four of these guys were sent away. Jordan Goodwin, Yuta Watanabe, and I believe Kane Bates Diop all shipped off to um, Memphis. As well as Metu, I believe he was traded as well. Um, but all four of these guys are no longer on the roster. Metu might have been cut, though. Uh, they also bring in Royce O'Neal and David Roddy, who are going to help them in the playoffs. Both can be, you know, dropped into your playoff rotation. Royce O'Neal especially, he's got loads of playoff experience, averaging about 7 points per game, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2.3 steals in 3 games this year for the Phoenix Suns. He's been pretty solid so far. Um, put up similar numbers in Brooklyn, just not quite, you know, as efficient from the field. 44%, 46% from three on four and a half attempts in 21 minutes in a Phoenix jersey. Meanwhile, David Roddy, uh, these are his stats as a Memphis Grizzly because he only played one game so far with the Suns where he put up five points and a rebound. He averaged eight points and about 4.2 rebounds on not great shooting splits whatsoever in Memphis. They also keep Nasir Little, who was rumored to be on the trading block, but they do keep him around. He's not putting up any crazy numbers, but he's averaging a solid four points per game two rebounds on 45% shooting in 13 minutes a night. Now, all of those guys that we just talked about, Damian Lee's coming back soon, hopefully. Um, they still got Drew Eubanks, Koji off the bench. So it's a it's a solid group here in Phoenix. Um, you know, great role players to go along with that big three that is just so efficient. Taking a look at the outlook the rest of the season, as you can see, they worked their way up to the sixth spot, but it is a tightly contested Western Conference. The nine seed and the five seed are separated by just three games. Um, Golden State is also eight and two over the last few games, so it's going to be a tight race all the way to the finish line. Um, you know, you got Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles, and then Houston two more times, so they're going to be playing Houston three times over a four-game stretch. Need to take care of business there. Uh, because they got a, somewhat of a rough stretch coming up. So yeah, if you did enjoy today's video at any point, make sure to like button, hit the subscribe button as well. Like I said, we're trying to hit 100 likes on today's video. And with all that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.